हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैड स्टार्टेड अ डिस्कशन ऑन सेमीकंडक्टर डिवाइसेस अंडर व्हिच वी स्टडीड सम डिटेल्स अबाउट पीएन जंक्शन व्हाट एक्चुअली इट इज व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पीएन जंक्शंस एंड आल्सो द फंडामेंटल और द प्रिंसिपल वेज टू प्रिपेयर पीएन जंक्शन and out of those three principal ways one among that was the diffusion method and in our today's class we will deal in detail about this method itself so as such we know that diffusion means the movement of charges which takes place to bring the system under equilibrium condition from non equilibrium condition so generally we say from higher concentration to lower concentration flow or movement of charges takes place so how it is going to be in the case of pn junction formation let us study so in general we can say that in diffusion method an impurity element is added to the semiconductor which is going to get diffused at certain temperature so pn junction we know that P is P type semiconductor, N is N type semiconductor, which are obtained due to doping. And when N type and P type semiconductors are first joined together, a very large density gradient exists between both the sides of P N junction. So if one side we have the P type semiconductor and another side we have N type semiconductor. which means p type semiconductor contains holes as the majority charge carriers whereas n type semiconductor contains electrons as the majority charge carriers so when these two are brought together we can observe that on one side they are positive charge carriers and on another side they are negatively charged so clearly we can observe there is a large density gradient which is created across the junction and this creates a sort of non equilibrium in the system and the result is that some of the free electrons from the donor impurity atoms begin to migrate across this newly formed junction to fill up the holes in the p type material which produces negative ions and because the electrons have moved across the pn junction from n type to p type they leave behind positively charged donor ions on the negative side and now the holes from the acceptor impurity migrate across the junction in opposite direction which means into the region where there are large number of free electrons so as a result a charge density of p type along the junction is filled with negatively charged acceptor ions and the charge density of n type along the junction becomes positive and this charge transfer of electrons and holes across the pn junction is called as diffusion so in this method of preparing pn junction we can observe that diffusion is the main criteria which brings back the state of equilibrium which means stability and the width of these p and n layers depends on how heavily each side is doped with acceptors and donors respectively so in detail we will even derive this expression in coming classes but for time being we can remember that the amount of doping is deciding the width of this p and n layer but we should know till what extent this diffusion is going to take place or whether it is going to continue without any limit is the question but this process continues back and forth until the number of electrons which have crossed the junction have large enough electrical charge to repel or prevent any more charge carriers from crossing over the junction it means that the difference in the charge density that is the density gradient 
has to be reduced and diffusion continues in order to reduce this density gradient and eventually the state of equilibrium means electrically neutral situation will occur producing a potential barrier around the area of the junction because the donor atoms repel the holes and the acceptor atoms repel the electrons. So here clearly we can observe there is a potential barrier due to which the further diffusion will generally not occur because already the state of equilibrium is achieved. So clearly we can visualize when we bring together P and N type semiconductor large density gradient is produced which on diffusion finally brings up the state of equilibrium producing a potential barrier around the area of the junction. And next depending on this we can study about the contact potential. So contact means it is the area where P and N type semiconductor are brought in contact which forms the junction. And we have seen due to diffusion there is a potential barrier formed at that junction. But what actually is a contact potential is the question. So we can say that the most interesting electrical property of a junction is that a potential difference develops across the junction even when the junction is at equilibrium. And this itself is called as the contact potential or contact field. So as we have seen due to the migration of charges that is diffusion process there is accumulation of negative charges on P side and accumulation of positive charges on N side which is going to create a potential barrier which is called as a depletion region at the junction. And even if when we say that the state of equilibrium is attained still there is a potential difference across the junction which is called as contact potential or also such field is called as contact field. And if you want to know its range then in general its value ranges between 0.1 volt to 1 volt. So the reason for it is diffusion itself. So if we plot a graph of potential difference how it is going to vary across the junction. So this side is P, this side is N and this is the region of depletion or we can say potential barrier and the variation of potential is something like this. So on one side it is having a negative potential on another side it is having a positive potential but in the depletion region we can observe there is a variation in potential difference which is evident from this graph. So this is about the contact potential and next we can move on to the energy band diagram. So how the energy bands that is conduction band, valence band, their impurity levels and the Fermi level, how it is going to vary when PN junction is formed. That is what we are going to study under this heading. So we know that for PN junction we need the P type semiconductor and for N region we need N type semiconductor. Here E VP means the energy of valence band corresponding to P region. ECP is energy corresponding to the conduction band of P side. In the same manner here ECN is the energy corresponding to conduction band of N region and here EVN is the energy corresponding to the valence band corresponding to N region. And when PN junction is formed, we can observe that depletion region is created due to diffusion which is also called as space charge region. So clearly we can say these show the position of conduction band and valence band near the junction. So here energies 
corresponding to P region is lifted when compared to that of N region. So if we are going to consider PN junction then its Fermi energy lies somewhere here. We know that P region means majority charge carriers are acceptors or holes and acceptor level lies just above the valence band whereas in N region or N type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are electrons and the concentration is increased using donors and the donor level lies just below the conduction band. But when we are forming the PN junction, the Fermi level has to be same. So it is evident from this energy band diagram. And as we have seen, because of the charge transfer, the energies on the P side have been raised relative to the N side. And we say the contact potential phi is developed and its corresponding energy difference between the two sides that is N and P side will be equal to E into phi. So clearly here we can say that this is the energy corresponding to P region, this is the energy corresponding to N region and this is the energy difference which is given as E times of contact potential. And we have seen that even at equilibrium there exists a potential difference and also there is a difference in energies. Thus we can observe there is flow of current across the junction or across the space charge region and the presence of contact potential impedes the flow of this diffusion current. So these currents which are going to flow across the space charge region are called as diffusion currents because they arise due to the diffusion which we have already discussed in previous two slides. So what will be the nature of these diffusion currents? What about the amounts and its direction? Whether one is going to compensate the other or whether they are going to overpower we are going to see in our coming classes. So if we just want to compare what happens when potential barrier is created then some of the graphical representations can be studied. So if we concentrate on charge density then its variation can be understood using this graph. This side is P and this side is N type semiconductor and, and due to the density gradient the electrons will be accumulated near the P side of the junction and positive carriers will be accumulated near the junction of N side. So here there is accumulation of negative charges which is evident in this graph and if you move on to this side it is positive. So this shows the variation of charge density and in the space charge region clearly we can observe this nature of variation of charge density. Then also we can observe the nature of barrier potential that is in the depletion region we can observe the barrier potential is slowly going on increasing if this side is a P and this side is N and here it is in the negative potential whereas this side it will be at positive potential so that we can say that the potential barrier will be equal to Vb which is equals to Va plus of minus Vb or we can say Va minus Vb. So that negative sign implies the direction. And this is how the barrier potential is going to vary in the space charge region. So in our today's class, we have discussed about diffusion method, which explained about the formation of potential barrier. Then moving to the contact potential, which is an interesting electrical property of a PN junction. And then we also studied the energy band diagram, which shows 
the energy bands in the pn junction also the contact potential and various types of fluxes associated with the junction that is jnr jpg jpr and jng and in our next class we will study about net current flow across the junction so this is it for today's class see you in our next class which will help you in understanding semiconductor devices in more depth till then stay tuned study well and also don't miss to subscribe to my channel for more physics related classes and finally thank you for watching